A lot of our lesson this morning is going to be over in Numbers chapter 13. Numbers chapter 13 and 14 is primarily where we are going to be able, or where we are going to be looking today. You know, we know that the Old Testament is a rich source of excellent lessons. In fact, Romans 15 verse 4 tells us, for whatever things were written before were written for our learning. Um, so, you know, through these scriptures, through the things that are in the Old Testament, we get good examples of, of uh, people and good examples of things that we need to know and understand. And, you know, one of the best ways to look at the Old Testament is through character studies. And we can gain a lot through the lives of many people in the Old Testament. And that's what we're going to do in the lesson this afternoon is we are going to do a bit of a character study on Caleb. Uh, the man Caleb, a man who wholly followed the Lord. Most of what we see about Caleb, we see in Numbers chapter 13 and 14. We know from reading it, starting in verse 1 of chapter 13, the Lord spoke to Moses saying, Send men to spy out the land of Canaan, which I am giving to the children of Israel. From each tribe of their fathers you shall send a man, every one a leader among them. So Moses sent them from the wilderness of Paran, according to the command of the Lord, all of them men who were heads of the children of Israel. So you have uh, Caleb is one of these men. We will read about that a little bit later. He is one of these 12 men that is chosen to go and spy out the land. And as we see in this uh, first three verses, these were leaders, people who were already leaders among the people. So Caleb already has a stature uh, or a position amongst the people of Israel at this point. He is already well respected among the people. But we also see that Caleb is a man of courage. He accepted this task to go and to spy out the land. If you go down to verse 17, then Moses sent them to spy out the land of Canaan and said to them, Go up this way into the south, go up to the mountains, and see what the land is like, whether the people who dwell in it are strong or weak, few or many, whether the land they dwell in is good or bad, whether the cities they inhabit are like camps or strongholds, whether the land is rich or poor, and whether there are forests there or not. Be of good courage. And bring some of the fruit of the land. Now the time was the season of the first ripe grapes. So they went up and spied out the land from the wilderness of Zin as far as Rehob near the entrance of Hamath. So they're told to go into this land and to spy it out. And it says, be of good courage. This was something that was courageous for them to do. That they had to, I guess you would say, have some guts to be able to take on this job. Well, continuing down in verse 30, then Caleb uh, quieted the people. <coughs> Sorry. Then Caleb quieted the people before Moses and said, let us go up at once, take possession, for we are well able to overcome it. But the men who had gone up with him said, we are not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we. And they gave the children of Israel a bad report of the land which they had spied out, saying, The land through which we have gone as spies is a land that devours its inhabitants. And all the people whom we saw in it are men of great stature. There we saw the giants, the descendants of Anak, came from the giants. And we were like grasshoppers in our own sight. And so we were in their sight. You have Caleb here, though, that speaks up. And he has the courage to speak up. And he says, we need to go in immediately and we need to take this land because, you know, we are able to do so. We see that he has faith and that he has convictions in the face of this opposition. Continuing on in chapter 14, so all the congregation lifted up their voices and cried and the people wept that night. And all the children of Israel complained against Moses and Aaron, and the whole congregation said to them, If only we had died in the land of Egypt, or if only we had died in the wilderness. Why has the Lord brought us to this land to fall by the sword, that our wives and children should become victims? 
Would it not be better for us to return to Egypt? So they said to one another, let us select a leader and return to Egypt. Then Moses and Aaron fell on their faces before all the assembly of the congregation of the children of Israel. But Joshua, the son of Nun, Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, who were among those who had spied out the land, tore their clothes. And they spoke to all the congregation of the children of Israel, saying, The land we pass through to spy out is an exceedingly good land. If the Lord delights in us, then he will bring us into this land and give it to us, a land which flows with milk and honey. Only do not rebel against the Lord, nor fear the people of the land, for they they are our bread. Their protection has departed from them, and the Lord is with us. Do not fear them. And all the congregation said to stone them with stones. Now the glory of the Lord appeared in the tabernacle of meeting before all the children of Israel. So you have a man here who had his faith and he held on to that faith and he held on to those convictions even through some bitter opposition to the point that these men were going to go get stones and wanting to stone them for what they said. But yet he stuck to what he believed. He was a man of faith and he had complete trust in God. We see that in verse 8. If the Lord delights in us, then he will bring us into this land. He knew that God would take care of them and that was the key to his success. God was very angry with the Israelites in this instance because of their lack of faith and their rebellion. And God wants to destroy all of them. He wants to destroy them at this point. From verse 15 through verse 19, we read about that, that that he wants to destroy these stiff-necked and these rebellious people, but Moses interjects and, and Moses intercedes and he talks to God and God relents. But God says... What's going to happen to these people now that they have rebelled? Well, they're not going to be able to go into this promised land. They're not going to be able to see this wonderful land. But he says that Caleb and Joshua will be able to. Verse 28, say to them, as I live, says the Lord, just as you have spoken in my hearing, so I will do to you. The carcasses of you who have complained against me shall fall in this wilderness All of you who were outnumbered according to your entire number from 20 years old and above, except for Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, and Joshua, the son of Nun, you shall by no means enter the land which I swore I would make you dwell in. You know, Moses often repeats this promise that was made to them. Numbers chapter 32, verses 11 and 12. Uh, Deuteronomy 1, verses 34 through 36. These are all times that Moses reminds them of this. You will not enter this land. You will die before you get there, except for Caleb and Joshua. And when the children of Israel were numbered the second time, this is 40 years later, all those from 20 years old and upward had died except for Joshua and Caleb. Numbers chapter 26, verses 63 through 65. All of these men died because they were unfaithful, but Caleb stood up, he held to his faith, and he was given that gift. You know, in their, you know, all these, they, they complained and they said that these people were huge and that they were going to, uh, you know, just they were ants compared to these people. But yet in their first battle, when they first cross over and fight the Canaanites, Numbers chapter 31 verses 48 and 49 tells us, Then the officers who were over thousands of the army, the captains of thousands and the captains of hundreds, came near Moses, and they said to Moses, Your servants have taken account of the men of war who are under our command, and not a man of us is missing. Think about that. You had them talking about and being upset that that all these spies saying, We can't go in. They're stronger than us. They're bigger than us. And Joshua and Caleb were trying to persuade them that God would be with them and God would help them. And in that first battle, they did not lose one man. God truly took care of them. 
Well, after 40 years of wandering, Caleb receives his inheritance. In Joshua chapter 14, verses 6 through 15, this talks about the inheritance that Caleb is to receive. And, <coughs> excuse me, the children of Judah came to Joshua and Gilgal, and Caleb the son of Japuna, the Kenzanite, said to him, You know the word which the Lord said to Moses, the man of God, concerning you and me in Kadesh Barnea. I was 40 years old when Moses, the servant of the Lord, sent me from Kadesh Barnea to spy out the land. And I brought back word to him as it was in my heart. Nevertheless, my brethren who went up with me made the heart of the people melt, but I wholly followed the Lord my God. So Moses swore on that day, saying, Surely the land where your foot has trodden shall be your inheritance and your children's forever, because you have wholly followed the Lord my God. And now, behold, the Lord has kept me alive, as he said, these 45 years, ever since the Lord spoke this word to Moses while Israel wandered in the wilderness. And now here I am this day, 85 years old. As yet I am as strong as the day, as on the day that Moses sent me, just as my strength was then, so now my strength for war, both for going out and for coming in. Now, therefore, give me this mountain of which the Lord spoke in that day, for you heard in that day how Anakim were there and the cities were great and fortified. It may be that the Lord will be with me and I shall be able to drive them out, as the Lord said. And Joshua blessed him and gave Hebron to Caleb, the son of Japuna, as an inheritance. Hebron, therefore, became the inheritance of Caleb, the son of Japuna, the Kenizzite, to this day, because he wholly followed the Lord God of Israel. And the name of Hebron formerly was Kirjith. Arba. Arba was the greatest man among the Anakim. Then the land had rest for war. You know, look how long that this happened. You know, 45 years of 40 years of wandering, five years and dividing it. But these blessings were a blessing given from God in verse 11. But verse 12 here is significant. Where it says, Now therefore give me this mountain of which the Lord spoke in that day, for you heard in that day how the Anakim were there, and the cities were great and fortified. It may be that the Lord will be with me, and I shall be able to drive them out as the Lord said. The very people, the land that the other ten spies said that they could not conquer is the choice of Caleb. That's the land he wants. The area where they had these giants or descendants of giants and the men say, we can't take this. We can't do this. And Caleb says, that's mine. That's what I want. That is the land I want. And he relies on the Lord. As the Lord said, we can conquer these giants and I will do it. And that's what Caleb says. Caleb could have had his choice of any land. And look what he picks. <laughs> He picks the one and he says, I'm as strong now at 85 years old as I was 45 years ago, and I will take this land because the Lord is on my side. Caleb trusted God, and he was blessed by receiving what he wanted. He waited a long time, 45 years, but he eventually got his inheritance. He got what he wanted. That came to him because of how faithful he was to God. So what are some lessons? As, as we look at Caleb, we've looked at the story of his life. What are some lessons that we can learn and some applications we can make from the life of Caleb? You know, first of all, a lesson in character. Caleb was first and foremost a man of God. And that is so much of, of what we need today. We need to be a people that puts God first and make sure that we are right with God first and foremost. Caleb had courage. He had courage. He wasn't afraid of the giants. 2 Timothy 1 verse 7, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. We should not be fearful of the things going on around us, but we have power because we serve God and we know that we can do things. The fearful and cowardly will receive the same reward as all the other wicked people. Revelation chapter 21 
and verse 8. If we are cowardly, we will not, you know, it says in that verse, we'll have our part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone, that second death. But Caleb was also dedicated. His life was a job well done. You know, remember what happens to the other 10 spies in chapter 14 of Numbers, verses 36 and 37. Now the men whom Moses sent to spy out the land who returned and made all the congregation complain him by bringing a bad report of the land, those very men who brought the evil report about the land died by the plague before the Lord. Those that gave the bad report died, but yet Caleb and Joshua remained because they dedicated their life to God. Caleb had faith and trust in God. Romans 8.31, what then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? Verse 37 of the same chapter, yet in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. You know, we are going to face our own giants. We are going to have our own mountains to conquer. You know, we will, they will take various forms, many different things. But, you know, it may be a personal weakness, maybe some kind of an addiction. It may be some kind of a task, maybe some kind of an opportunity that opens up in front of us. But we will all have those difficult, mount, difficult mountains and we will all face our own giants. How can I be strong like Caleb? Well, Ephesians 3.16 says that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might through his spirit in the inner man. How do we become strong? How do we become courageous? By studying God's word, by growing closer to him, you know, by learning and developing that spiritual relationship with God, that will help us to be strong and courageous like Caleb. Ephesians chapter 6, starting in verse 10 through verse 17, talks about putting on this whole armor of God, putting on all of these things, uh, you know, the, the girded your waist with truth, put on the breastplate of righteousness, shod your feet with the gospel of peace. All of these things of becoming closer to God, and that strengthens us. But we also have to wholly trust God and rely on his promises. You know, Hebrews 11 verse 6 says, Without faith it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. You know, how many people say, yes, I believe in God, but then they turn right around and say, well, I don't know if I'm going to heaven. What does the Bible say? The Bible says if I live the life I need to and I'm following him and putting him first in my life, he's given me a promise. I can rely on that promise. So there's nothing to be fearful of because I can rely on God and I know that he will keep his promise. You know, it takes time, but eventually the object of our hope will come. Titus 1-2, in hope of eternal life, which God, who cannot lie, promised before time began. You know, there's so many things. You know, we're an instant gratification society. We're an instant gratification people, right? We want things now, or we want it when we want it. You know, I want to order something and have it shipped, and it show up exactly when it says it is, or... I want to be able to get in the car and go to the store or go to the restaurant and it be open and ready for me whenever I want to go. We understand we're that type of people, but so many times things take time. And we have to have that patience to know that that reward is coming. We've looked at Revelation, right, for several weeks. And we look through Revelation and we look at the persecutions and we look at, at the things that are happening to these Christians and Remember, they're crying out. They're saying, how long? How much longer for this to happen? And God tells them, not yet. Not yet. And then we see what we just studied this morning in Revelation chapter 18, that it happens. And they will be avenged. God has promised that. God told them that. Well, sometimes things take time, but he will fulfill his promises. And we have to rely on God 
just like Caleb did. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, starting in verse 16, says, Now may our Lord Jesus Christ himself and our God and Father who has loved us and given us everlasting consolation and good hope by grace comfort your hearts and establish you in every good word and work. We need to rely on God. You know, with God on our side, we can face any giant. We can conquer any mountain. With him on our side, we can face them with courage, and we can face them with, with uh, confidence. We need to follow Caleb's example and follow the Lord fully, not holding back, not doubting, not wavering, but being confident. Again, think about this man standing there with people wanting to pick up rocks and stone him for what he says, and he stays convicted and stays confident, knowing that God will take care of him. You know, at some point, some may be sooner than others, but at some point, we will receive the object of our hope. We will receive that reward. First Peter 4.19 Therefore, let those who suffer according to the will of God commit their souls to him in doing good as to a faithful creator. God is faithful. God will give us the gift that he has told us. He will take care of us the way he has told us he will because he loves us and he cannot lie. We need to be like Caleb. Be strong, be confident, and know that God will take care of us. If there's anything we can do for you this afternoon, please come as we stand and sing.